to use um, digital platforms or in-person platforms is an important um, step as peace builders. But for Plus Peace, our main goal is threefold. Um, our goal is to make peace building known. Um, our second one is to make peace building accessible. Um, and the last one is to make peace building actionable. And the goal of that is that together doing collective action, that we have the power in our hands to build peace. Geneva Peacecast, a series on solutions from Geneva Peace Week, produced by Interpeace and Fondation Hirondelle. Hello, I'm Luvini Ranasinghe from Interpeace. With me is Monica Kurka, the director of Plus Peace. She's a cultural organizer, peace builder, communication strategist, designer, and facilitator leveraging the power of storytelling and human-centered design to create communities where everyone belongs. Thank you for joining with us today, Monica. Thank you so much, Lovini, for having me. Can you please tell us a story which comes to your mind when we talk about the pandemic, storytelling, and the importance of technology for peace? Sure, yes. Um, I think when the pandemic came, you know, as a facilitator, um, it, it really hit us hard as we started getting one by one cancellations of in-person events or workshops or storytelling workshops. And we knew that we needed to do something to connect us. Um, and so soon after uh, the, the pandemic um, started, uh, Mar the Mary Hoke Center, which works on neuroscience and peace building, um, and, and ourselves, we, we launched something called The Hive. And The Hive was an in, uh, online, not in person, an online um, platform that we created and that brought um, artists and creatives and peace builders and storytellers together to use the space to make sure that we um, stay connected first. And talk about you know how this uh, how the pandemic has been affecting all of us, and what are we co-creating out of this um, you know this uh, the mourning and the loss and the grieving, and the hive really became something of a really beautiful connection to to peace builders around the world, from Kenya to you know Cambodia to um, Iceland and uh, Greenland and all you know all all around the world. Um, um, hundreds of, of peace builders and creatives and artists joined together. Um, and we were able to share the space to really co-create what we wanted, even despite uh, it seemingly we didn't have the ingredients for joy. We said that we, we together we can make the ingredients for joy. So in a way we were baking, you know, the cake we wanted to eat um, during the pandemic. Could you please tell us, Monica, according to you, how important has it been to find technological solutions for peace building during pandemic? During the pandemic, I don't, I don't think anybody had a choice if they wanted to continue to be connected. And, and for us as peace builders and community facilitators, we knew that um, we had to, to use, um, you know, digital platforms, whether it be Zoom or, or Teams, or even um, I would say. Uh, Airtable or these more uh, co-participatory uh, processes of co-creating online, um, we we quickly realized that one of the main the main questions we had was not really if we use them but how we use them, and so we really jumped into a process of creating strategies around the purpose of the meetings and the purpose of gathering. Um, during the pandemic, we we did launch a few. Uh, hybrid platforms that that involved um, it was online but what it what it involved was uh, what we would maybe couldn't even do in person and so I would mention something called flash calls um, so flash calls was something that plus piece uh, created where when there was a, a, a crisis or a uh, a world event that that w was calling all of our attention especially as peace builders where many of us um, are on the ground or intervening or in a position to create some analysis we wanted to bring our community together the plus peace um, coalition has more than 40 me uh, 40 members and it, um, 21 cities um, with a peace in our cities platform that we co-facilitate um, and there we 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 first covered the capital uh, riots uh, that we that we all saw here the the capital insurrection in the United States and then we covered Burma and then we uh, looked at Palestine and then we looked at um, uh, a few other conflicts or crises and 
And what we found um, uh, that in these flash calls, we we usually do a very loose panel of six to eight uh, experts or people that are living experts, we call them. So on the ground, first experience, like in Afghanistan, we um, our latest one, people that are trying to extract their families, trying to get families out, people still in Afghanistan. Um, and then we brought peace builders together alongside them. Um, and then we also brought uh, just our greater community. And what happened in those spaces was really quite amazing. What happened was a lot of uh, uh, people were able to connect and create a common message and a common ground on some of the issues. Whereas before, a lot of peace building organizations uh, maybe had their own you know, narrative or their own initiative on the issue. And now together in the flash call, we were able to co-create a, a succinct message and even produced a, you know, a co-created Google Doc where uh, with talking points and with main issues um, that was uh, open sourced and useful to all of us. And so um, these kind of ways of, of having a very clear purpose and having a clear strategy that is useful to our community into the peace building community, um, we found that digital platforms were actually more useful um, and something we frankly just could not even do in person. Very interesting uh, story, how you have used technologies during the pandemic. If I, if I dig deeper into the same question, could you give us a few examples or rather a few stories related to amplifying rising voices of peace builders from across the board around the world? How, if you have a few examples that you can concretely talk to us about? Yeah, sure. Um, and so again, in the same thread as using digital digital platforms um, to be able to do this, uh, we, we were... Um, one of our you know, key purposes at Plus Peace is to is to create meaningful participation of uh, horizontal relationships. So, you know, between people that are maybe hold the same power, but also with vertical uh, power structures. And that means, you know, gov governance, um, people that maybe have a more, more positional power, but are also open to change and transformation. And so um, just continuing with the flash calls or something we, we've, had a few um, online summits. So we had a narrative summit with the Peace in Our Cities um, platform. Um, and the Peace in Our Cities platform, we co-facilitate with Impact Peace and Pathfinders. Um, and together we, we support uh, cities, we advance uh, research, we amplify the work of peace builders as you're asking. And then we also do um, uh, accompanying um, peace builders on the ground in cities as they're trying to cut violence in half. And um, one of the examples I would say is we did a flash call on uh, Colombia and with, uh, with a few cities uh, that were uh, also in our network. And um, we had the city of Palmira and, and also civil society partners from uh, Cali. And there, uh, Cali and Palmira are from uh, the district of Cauca, and that that is that was where a lot of the hot spots were happening. Cali was one of the center points of the violence, and where it started, or or I wouldn't say violence the uprisings. And what um what we really learned was that there was a narrative that was coming up in the spaces that was really important, and it was brought up by peace builders. Um, and the mayors were there to listen. And the mayor's staff was were there to listen. And one of the the narratives that was coming up is that we need. Um, peace builders are saying is we need a public dialogue and a public discourse of where the peace process is at. And, and so us lifting that up in that space, uh, uh, what, uh, what happened was the mayor of, uh, of, of uh, Palmira and their staff actually reached out and they asked for a consultation with peace builders to be able to really dig deeper and what, what that narrative could be, how can they frame it and how can they lead on that? And um, this really shifted things uh, for the city and it, it positioned peace builders. And, and I would say this meaningful or, you know, vertical uh, participation with our with our city leaders um, was really important because that's, you know, that's how power currently sits now. And the the city was very attentive, very, very interested. And they did, in fact, begin um, to create a discourse and create some spaces for dialogue following uh, the flash call and then following the, the personal consultation they had with eight peace builders around narrative change and around actual 
the mechanisms of creating these dialogue spaces. Um, and then we, they followed up and they reconnected with, you know, with their own people, uh, their own country, you know, peace builders on the ground. Um, and so these are the ways that not just amplifying, but amplifying is very important, but really creating a mechanism to, um, for connection and a mechanism where we are creating the, that meaningful participation. Talking about digital uh, technology and using technology for peace building, uh, what are, according to you, the limitations using these uh, technological advancements or the digital technologies in peace? The contrast between peace efficiency and peace effectiveness, how would you explain the challenges in the use of technology? Yeah, I mean, for us, I'll speak from our perspective. You know, we are very participatory and experiential as we do our work. Um, and that means that we believe that uh, peace building is an embodied process. It just doesn't sit in our heads and that we have to experience it. We have to uh, feel it. We have to um, to have a, a kinetic you know, connection with what it means to build peace together with others. And um, having facilitated, uh, we have a process uh, that, that um, I co-created with other, other designers um, through the years called Peace Design Labs. And Peace Design is, uh, is a process where we connect uh, peace building with um, human-centered design uh, methods, and then also with um, a lot of trauma-informed care. And so we're able to co-create with those that have experienced trauma and are living in violent situations and uh and create solutions and and even uh connections through these spaces and so for us um you know after leading you know i would say thousands of these workshops i think for us it was very um you know it was very challenging right to recreate those spaces in a in a digital world and i think we we did some great great uh, work but one of the main main kind of uh uh, limitations was the ability to to use our body for it. Um, and we were able to do it a little bit online. But um, and so what I mean by that, just recently, we were in the city of Kisumu, Kenya, working on electoral violence. We uh, we co-created a peace um, art and music festival with uh, artists and peace builders on the ground. And um, we just came back two weeks ago. And while there, you know, we were able to do a peace design lab in person. And, you know, I was reminded again of this, you know, this beautiful experience of of laughing and feeling each other and being close and doing um, doing the work of of a full experience of what it means to build peace um, as it's, you know, it's a head, hat, head, heart and hands um, and feet experience uh, when we build peace. And that those kind of, you know, just the different exercises and the different ways of being together, I think that's been the biggest um, loss for, for, for us at, at Plus Peace. Um, but it's, it's been a, also a challenge of how do we recreate those situations and that, those scenarios um, in a digital world. Thank you so much, Monica, for this very meaningful discussion. I'm Luvini Ranasinghe from Interpeace. And in this episode, I've talked to Monica Kurka, the director of Plus Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Geneva Peacecast, produced by Interpeace and Fondation Hirondelle.